Hey everybody, welcome to a dram of diving tonight. We're going to be talking about uh, kind of cold water versus warm water. The idea overall is to, um, we have plenty of people dive in warm water and we're going to discuss uh, what makes the, as we proclaimed, 80, 80, 80, 80 diver. Uh, and we're going to talk about kind of the benefits of cold water uh, and see exactly what gear requirements are required to uh, dive the cold water and why in the world you would do it. We do a whole lot of cold water diving up where we are. Uh, and uh, we are going to be joined by Dana Hunt from Hunt's Diving and South Jersey Scuba. A bunch of people tend to come in and out of their entire screen. Uh, so I'm not quite sure who's actually going to be popping in and out. Uh, they've, they're they pretty active down in South Jersey. So I'm going to bring these guys in and we'll start looking at your comments and start talking about it from there. So first off, I'm going to bring in yeah, South good. Jersey Scuba. Oh, there it is. Uh -oh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> He's got, hey, Kevin just hey. disappeared. So we've got Ed, Michael Brown, and Kevin. And I'm going to bring Dana in here in a minute. I think Dana's ready. Dana Hunt. Hey, Dana, let's turn on your mic. I'll share it to this. Are you sharing yet? How's it going? There back? you go. It's in like 40 different yeah. groups now. Nice. Oh, boy. All right. So uh, Dana Hunt from Hunt's Diving, South Jersey Scuba, uh, Ed, Michael Brown, and Kevin Pang. Is that all you guys got at the shop right now? Yeah, it's everyone. Yes. Here. That's everybody. All right. So uh, Michael Brown tends to be a very frigid diver and tends to try to stay more tropical if he can. Uh, Ed is a little bit more well-versed in the uh, colder, I guess, colder Jersey waters. Uh, same with sure. Kevin comes up a whole lot and dives up with us and uh, dives with us and Dana Hunt on Hunt's <laughs> Diving. So uh, Michael Brown, let's start with, off with you since you kind of are given a little bit of a unique perspective here. Why do you stray towards the tropical waters pretty much only? Uh, it's more so the, I guess, the different elements between the two. So um, with warm water diving, uh, I, I tend to do more photography work. So it's essentially a little bit easier and less daunting than the cold water, just because you're diving with less gear and you can concentrate more so on what you're doing. Um, and I think a lot of, tropical divers aim that perspective of it's easier uh you know it doesn't require a lot of effort to do the cold water as the cold water diving does gotcha so you just don't like the challenge of cold water uh, i'll still do it but uh oh. of the photography uh, i mean it's a little more challenging right it's, yeah, you're going the, for the the easier photography. Water, it's a lot more challenging you're dealing with a lot more elements um and especially with a lot of the bigger rigs of cameras um you're asking for a lot of, you know, it's, there's a lot of elements and a lot of things you're doing. So usually the colder water diving, it's deeper, um, more wide angle where I'm, <laughs> I'm more of a, uh, you know, macro photography person myself. Ah, so you're looking for more macro photography. So yes. there's more species that you can take a look at and stuff like that. Uh, let's flip flop over to Dana. Dana, you ready there, bud? Yeah, we'll go. Hey, how was up? Um, so, question for you: Have how much experience do you have tropical? Uh, zero. Zero. None at all. Zero. None I've at never all. been out of uh, the river and the lake diving for fun, unfortunately. Wow. But um, yeah. diving was just something I always did wherever I was. Yeah. And this is where I am. So that works. But you dive cold waters and you're warm at the same time. Yeah, there's a technique for that. I don't want to elaborate too much. <laughs> but peeing in your dry suit? I mean, that's... that's... Uh, oh, my. <laughs> that's why we use bathtub silk going on there. <laughs> that works. So Dana now, does a little bit more uh, commercial diving, right, Dana? Yeah, we use hot water systems. So yep. I actually have burn marks on my legs right now from... Not burn marks, but they're like marks from the hot water tubes that go through the suit. And I have about a hundred degree water piped in when I'm working. Um, and actually, you get too hot and you got to dump it overboard. But uh, it's yeah. plenty warm. The water is 34 where I was diving today, so um, it was plenty warm. I was sweating actually. How was the biz before you got in? Uh, five to ten feet. Oh, okay, <laughs> not be not amazing. After nobody, it was like one. Yeah, nobody suffered any loss here. Trust me. 
<laughs> oh, Brock, very, very good point. Isn't the St. Lawrence considered the Caribbean of the North? Uh, yes, especially from being from Canada, that is the most southern point. So that's kind of like your Florida Keys. Um, so I completely agree with that statement there. Um, the St. Lawrence Keys. Doesn't, doesn't that kind of make St. Dana a warm water diver, though? It does. So that's kind of weird. That's why I kind of wanted Dana in there. Like, yeah, yeah he's in cold water, but... I think he is a warm water diver. I mean, he's, you know, he's doing a lot of work, but he's not actually experiencing any cold water. So has, have Dana, have well, you been in a dry suit in, or a full dry suit in cold water? Oh yeah. Yeah. I did the ice diving and I do it all the time. Actually, you know, when we're in the winter season for work, uh, not every job has hot water available. Uh, not every job, job is a dive job. Sometimes it's wading through water or just, uh, standing in chest deep water, putting something together, you know, so you have that kind of opportunity for work in the dry suit, which nobody likes working in a dry suit. No, uh, it's, a, no. it's, a, it's a bad experience. Um, <laughs> when you have, when you're used to hot water anyways, and then uh, for fun, I dive all year round if I can, you know, I think we did a new year's day day dive like two years ago with mm-hmm. uh deep stop. I, they came up and we got blown out from the boat ride, but yeah. I want to say we made like a, 50 minute plus oh, dive yeah. it was a long and, dive no one felt their face <laughs> yeah and my hands were like in lobster mitts after i took my gloves off so <laughs> um yeah i want to say we did 50 minutes in 36 or 35 degree water which was pretty cold yeah Kevin is absolutely right. We almost visited Canada this weekend based on his navigational <laughs> skills. They were unbelievable. We will revisit, except for the fact that uh, apparently Detroit is a little bit flip-flopped here. But for the vast majority of the St. Lawrence, Canada is north, United States is south. We just want to kind of you know, reference that for him. You had Chris convinced that you visited Canada diving for a minute. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> nice. That's it amazing. Was, someone told him that, and he was like, what? I'm pretty sure he, he thought you guys actually swam to Canada. Yeah, we, we, we they they tried. They, they did their best. If we didn't redirect, we I think we would have gotten there or at least been picked up there. That would have been amazing. Uh, so, Hoods, let's, let's uh, grab Ed here Yo. and see what Ed's got to say. Ed, Hoods and Gloves, how does that complicate things? Do you wear them when you go warmish water diving? How do you how do you handle Hoods and Gloves? Um, <clears throat> if I'm going warm... I do use a, a pair of like two mil reef gloves when <laughs> he's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use, I'll use the two mil tropical reef gloves when, uh, when they're allowed. Um, some places they do say you're not supposed to wear them. Oh, um, clarify that. Oh, yeah. Some people uh, might not know. Dana's never been to the Caribbean. So Dana might not know that. Scooters work well down there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, word on the street is like Bonaire. You're not supposed to have gloves because it's going to encourage touching. Um, you know, so, so that is a thing. I don't know anyone that's actually been caught and or fined by that, but that's what they say. So we respect their their wishes, so to speak, for the no gloves. Now, you know, when they're allowed, I do like to wear them just in case you do grab a, like a mooring line or something like that that might have uh, hydroids on them. Yeah. Right. So like that's a thing. Um, Fireworks. But yeah, I mean, it, it is going to make things a little bit uh, funnier to work, like a camera and stuff like that. But the uh, the thin ones aren't that big of a deal. Uh, not nearly as bad as three or five or seven mil. Seven mil gloves, you can't do anything yeah. except hopefully dive. Um, around Jersey, I really like wearing three mil gloves. They're not too heavy. They're still pretty warm. Um, Cozumel is a no glove zone as well. There you go. See, Scott right. knows. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'll usually dive. Uh, <laughs> what's Dana showing us? Oh no, uh, okay. Dana, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll usually wear like three three mil gloves up here, uh, and that's usually pretty good for water temps in the upper forties or fifties. Uh, and if it's into the sixties here, that's even better. So we get happy at that point. Yeah, and you guys get a nice mix of everything. You get forty five yeah. degrees of depth, and you could have sixty degrees up, you know, surface. Uh, yeah. We have thermoclines, significant thermoclines here. Uh, in the lakes where summer day, the water temp upper temp could be seventies and it could be, you know, 45 at depth uh, where Dana's at, at up in the river. It's a little bit more temperate throughout the entire thing. So um, 
I mean, quite literally, since this is, you know, the, the show has got a significant number of followers and, and people are around. So is there anything special you, you need to know with, with hoods that, you, that you're dealing with or anything like that for cold or warm water? Because there's plenty of people on here that might never have done hoods or gloves at all uh, that are actually watching this show. Most of the people have, but there are some people that might not have. So you want to clarify, yeah. rundown, any special techniques for usage of hood or gloves? Yeah, hood sucks. <laughs> uh, there's, there's really... <laughs> Unfortunately, there's really no you know, way around it. The hood sucks. No one, I don't think anybody really likes wearing the hood. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's another piece of equipment, right? You get used to it. You wear it yeah. a few times and just kind of do what you have to do to, to stay warm yeah. and do the dive, right? Yeah. Um, the one that Kevin was wearing has a, a different liner inside of it to be warmer. Uh, I just dive a 7 mil hood. What are you diving? Uh, I think that's a 5. So MB's diving a 5, and that's usually enough for colder water. <laughs> yeah. Um, I dive five all the way into, into ice. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. the only thing, some people can kind of get like a little bit of that like hood squeeze or something. So, you know, vent the hood, get some yeah. water into it. Uh, I mean, that's really about the only real other. And uh, equalization too, right? So yeah, equalization of the ears can become a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, yeah. just pull it out yeah, a little. That, and then you have some people that do like their mask over the hood, under the hood. It, it kind of depends. I just go over. I don't really care. I see a lot of people with the hood over the mask, and that always throws me for a loop because a lot of the hoods are designed to seal right there. They have, like, shark skin or open-cell mm -hmm. neoprene, and they're diving in cold water, and they throw that hood over top because, for I don't know, but it's a big hole right here. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of water transfer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it depends on how your depends on how your hood's cut and 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 what you're doing. Sometimes you put that hood up over the top so you don't lose your mask as easily. Um, held in place. Some people like to do that. Some people glue a GoPro to the top of their head and a bat signal. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Uh, let's see where where did uh the, where did the uh, shop clerk go? Hey, Kev. No. Grab my hood. A 12 millimeter hood. Now that oh is impressive. God. That looks wow. Like a, wow. That's like a hurt. That's a helmet. That's a flotation yeah. device. Yeah. Okay. I, I have not seen those. I dive, like I said, I dive five millimeter all Man. the way under ice. So um, do they come I, with weights? <laughs> the, uh, that's what ankle weights are for, for the head. Yeah. Waterproof has that 10 mil orange, yeah. orange hood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dana just wears a helmet. So oh my God. does that get cold underneath the helmet? How do you get warm <laughs> underneath there? Oh, oh did, in the hard hat? Yeah, the hard hat. Oh, well, the hard hat's uh, your head temperature is a function of your whole body. Said helmet? So if you're warm, you know, if you're if the water's too hot on you and you're diving, you'll start sweating inside there and you keep running the air train and uh, eventually you can't keep up with it and you find yourself really, really, really wet with sweat inside there. <laughs> that's that's that'd be nice for me. Uh, it's, it's, like a ho it's like a hockey locker room, but in a little... It is small space. space around your face. Yeah, exactly. oh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, there's that's, the uh, custom GoPro mount. Hold on, you wait one second. A lot of Aqua Seal right there. Yeah, this totally helps them out. With can, did you just redo it? Uh, I redid the fins. Yeah, they were all beat up. Yeah, Kevin's holding them upside down. Yeah. Disrespect. There he goes. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> uh, that's interesting what you did with the GoPro mount. I like that because it's a little bit harder to lose at that point in time. Yeah. I've seen some interesting stuff. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of Aqua Seal. It worked. Yeah. I thought Is you could talk about my other helmet that I wear. <laughs> yeah, I know. The one to get <laughs> around on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> He's All done right. plenty of jersey flops with that. Nice. Jersey flops. I love it. If you want to check out the jersey flop, check out their YouTube channel. It's it's pretty hilarious. You got so. the side mount throw, too. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right. So coming up is you know ice diving we actually have a we wrote for a cold diving specialty because we found that it's it's hard to go in between we'll get some people that come out for dry suit in colder water and not have any clue how to um actually dive in cold water and and deal with regulators freezing and stuff like that and i mean not quite ice but in the 40s which still we get free flows and stuff like that um dana recommendation for types of regs for cold water versus versus warm water um, we get a lot of people that try to to buy equipment for travel and then decide they love the sport and decide they want to do a bunch more local diving, especially up by us and extend their season, buy a dry suit, stuff like that. What recommendations uh, do you have for regs with that? Uh, I mean, brand specific aside, I really don't see a reason to not have an environmentally sealed regulator because the environment is much more than cold water. And depending where you are and what you're doing, it could be salt, 
that you're keeping out. Uh, it could be a little bit of mud, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just a little uh, bit. You yeah. know, but they yeah, could be a little bit of mud. Just dragging it. <laughs> could be a lot of mud. things. I have cleaned regulators out that people brought in for service, and I've had like zebra mussels inside the uh, the spring, you know, underneath the cap there, and. and I'm just like, how did that get there? You know, yeah. <laughs> I, I know how it got there, but yeah. I think that it's a good idea to kind of, from a consumer retailer point of view, like try to push that environmental steel regulator. They're going to get below the <clears throat> regulators are what uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit is. Uh, yeah, that's about Fahrenheit. the recommendation right there. Something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, if you go dive in the lake once, one time in your life, you've already probably you know, throwing that rec- that limit out the window with a regular with an unsealed regulator. Yeah, our thermal climb is what 30, 40 feet. You'll start hitting well, a little bit deeper than that for that second thermal climb. But yeah, you'll start hitting the thermal climbs in the Finger Lakes and be in the in midsummer in the fifties. And then if you're just gonna, you know, obviously I, I sell Apex and and some other brands, but Apex is my big one. And you know, I like their environmental seal system. And I think a lot of companies have very similar or competitive technologies at their disposal. So I think it's you know, you get in that environmental sealed regulator is just a big first step. And it's kind of a long step. It, it'll last you a long time. What's your, what do you specifically like about their environmental seals? Uh, the Apex one, yeah. the diaphragm, the rubber cap is external threaded versus being a, uh, you'd, I'd have to show you kind of the parts breakdown of it, but it's, it's a cap and it actually stops, stops ice formation. Well, well, of the actual diaphragm. Mm-hmm. Nice. So I've, I've, I've tested that pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> so um, a lot of the stuff that you need to like pay attention to when it comes to those sorts of things is um, some of the environmentally sealed stuff. Is is that Kevin making all sorts of noise back there? Yeah, yes. Kevin. Yeah, I'm going to mute you guys for a second. All right. So the environmentally sealed stuff that you got to pay attention to is some people just pack it filled with crystal lube and it's environmentally sealed because it's packed filled with a ton of lubricant essentially, um, which can get messy. It worked very well, but it can get messy at the same time. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of those. I prefer a cap similar to, to what you're, what you're talking about of, you know, know, that's, it's actually a rubberized cap that, that seals it up. Uh, I am a huge proponent of environmentally sealed regs. Absolutely. The only one that I, don't really do environmentally sealed as my oxygen right for deco so that I can take it apart a lot easier. It's a quick, easy piston. I like to take it apart and fix it and, and deal with it much more frequently than I want to deal with a diaphragm. So, South through Scooby, you guys are out of the penalty box at this point in time because uh, Kevin's not making Kevin's noise. Fault. I know. I don't know what he's doing. It's ridiculous. He's uh, messing around, man. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, I, this, is, this is wonderful right here because I can be like, Kevin's just interrupting everybody and causing all sorts of problems. And then Warren absolutely agrees. And then I can say, I can say anything and just say Warren absolutely agrees. Can so pull that up all day. I can pull it up all day long. He clarified. So we can't just use his stuff anymore. Oh, well. Um, all right. So why in the world would you even consider diving cold water? I mean, it's just stupid, isn't it? You can go someplace warmer. Could. In my opinion, it's, you know, part of my language. But it, well, not my language, but, like, it's just more fun. Like, it, it's, you know, it's a, there's a lot more to do where if you're in the Caribbean in the warmer water, you're stuck to, like, follow the DM, do this, do this, this. Where you're in the cold water, you know, especially in Jersey, we have a little bit more free reign. We can hunt. We can do different things. We can go down with objectives, what we're going to do, recover items. It's, it's in my opinion, you know, coming from both sides, it depends on what you want to do. Mm-hmm. But with the cold water, um, I find it a lot more interesting, meaning that we can do a lot more stuff. Like I can go down there, you know, and be like, hey, I'm going to go hunt lobster or I'm going to down to this wreck. I'm going to see if I can recover something. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Uh, Dana, you really don't have too much of a comparison. Um but, oh, William Buckley brought up, we, we experienced this recently. Less people, less boats, better viz. I mean, what did we have for viz on the job this past weekend? Dana? I wasn't with you. <laughs> you were. But we gave you a, the report. It was like 50 the feet. Report, beautiful. I, I had reported 50 feet yeah. uh, from a group of divers who I particularly, well, you know, take out a lot. 
But uh, <clears throat> it gets better. The guys come up in December, uh, and the water will be probably in the uh, bringing down to the low 40s by then. Mm-hmm. And they'll 75 feet of this. Yeah, we had 51 degrees, and I mean, it was beautiful. Um, <laughs> that's Dana. <laughs> Nobody trusted no. me a pre tire. <laughs> no, he's in a hot water suit. Um, so what we got coming up is extreme cold weather coming up. I'm going to mute South Jersey Scuba again. This is ridiculous. Um, so we got extreme cold water coming up. Uh, and the better viz stuff, we actually have ice coming up. And we sell, you wouldn't believe, we sell the air volume crap out of ice diving. Um, we have... Three or four weekends booked up if we get ice. We have three or four weekends booked up with two holes, and and it's completely <laughs> filled up. <laughs> Ed is like a middle school kid. Uh, uh, what's that? I'm only, what's up? I'm only laughing because he's laughing. Hey, man, I know. Said it. What? what are you laughing got, about, Ed? I got him laughing. I got Kevin over here helping try mix. I'm trying to keep it together. It's no, you working. can't. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> So you have an issue with ice diving in two holes? Uh, mostly the ice diving, not the holes. Yeah, if you go in one and come out the other, I got a problem with that. (laughs) Yeah, that actually, yeah. In actual real life, I have a problem with that, yes. That happened Uh, to you guys or something there? Not exactly. It was, it was, mm. um, yeah. Jason, you have no problem filling all your holes. (laughs) <laughs> thanks michael brown you're impressive uh nicole wants to go up and do some ice diving so ice diving uh ice diving becomes a, a it's tough because it's a big huge operation uh, but that's some of the fun of it uh is the planning and the operation getting all the equipment together uh teaching some of my students to use a chainsaw for the first time ever uh oh God. don't care there, there's do that's not a give it to liability Kevin. form yeah, it's a sad, it's a whole separate thing. There's some interesting oh po- pictures floating around the internet. That's that's uh that's me helping people with a chainsaw. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of stuff going on there, um, but it's a blast. And you know, people will argue and say, you know, all right, well, that's we have to ice dive to get 80, 90, 100 foot of viz, right? Because it's it kills all the algae and it's it's cold and you can see freaking forever. Um, we can see down to the Islander at, at 50 feet deep and we can see every part of it. You can stick your face in the water and see the entire thing. Um, but why would you, well, Dana, what would you, how would you pitch ice diving versus Caribbean diving? Cause somebody's going to respond and be like, well, yeah, you can do see a hundred feet when you go ahead and dive in the Caribbean too. What What's special about ice diving? Cause you did it. You've done it. Hmm. I don't know how it's sell it over Caribbean diving because that Caribbean diving sounds a lot more fun. But, uh, <laughs> <Nice>. Wait a <laughs> wait a pump the brakes there, Dave. <laughs> like, like, uh, hey. uh, it's relative, all right. So I would have to say, if you want to dive in Thousand Islands or you want to dive in the St. Lawrence River all summer long, you can do that and have twenty to 30, 15 to twenty feet of viz and probably have a good time. But if you want to see some of the same stuff. And you want to have it with the same visibility that you could expect in in bigger parts of the, or you know better parts of the world with warmer water. Um, you can do it in colder water. Uh, I think the idea of jumping through ice is daunting for people. It's mm-hmm. it's not when you get there, it's not that bad. But uh, I think people get a little anxiety about it, and they don't. I don't ever want to do that because it looks too cold. Yeah. I you- really really wasn't cold when I did it. No, no. If you got the right exposure protection, you're good. You yeah. do have to take care of your gear. And need to make sure it's tuned up, ready to go, and and it's solid before you get into that ice because it is unforgiving when you're actually doing that. Um, yeah, we did have some failures that day. I remember uh, we had some uh, some free flows and some minor leaking suits mm-hmm. and stuff. But it, you know that was kind of part of the experience, and that was for what it's worth. That was everybody's first ice dive. Yep. Yeah. There's for breathing nine, techniques. Nine class. Yeah. There's breathing techniques to make sure you you. Uh, you de-ice a little bit more than, than you would. There's, you know, there's some t- techniques. If you happen to have some hot water around, <laughs> you can, you can use it, but that creates some humidity and actually will, uh, will f- start the freezing cycle over and over and over again. Um, like, uh, you gotta be careful. Of much stuff. Game. Just get me a uh, heated undergarments. Just heated undergarments. That yeah. works for me. Um, that sounds horrible. No, no but just imagine so, my camera and the pictures. So, um, 
Jeff, the sounds of the ice, and I, I don't know what you guys know about that, but we'll we'll talk about it. I, I've, Michael Brown, have you done ice or Ed? Nope, not yet. But uh, I'm I looking. To, I want to do it at some no. point with you. Okay, you guys well, should come up and go ice diving. Yeah, there you go. Um, ice is just different. You learn new skills, and Warren's absolutely completely correct. You, you really see if your your stuff's tuned up, um, and that's the extreme cold. You see tethering. You see communication skills. Uh, you see teamwork that is completely different than some of the stuff you've experienced previously with ice. And then you get crazy visibility. And like Jeff said, the sounds of the ice. Ice starts to. It's weird. Like everybody thinks ice is just this singular. Um, the singular sheet, but it actually forms in blocks in, in geometric shapes and kind of refreezes itself to itself. And the light penetrates in different ways through it. And then as it kind of moves and creaks, these thunderous cracks will happen every once in a while. Um, so it's this, yeah, it's, it has all sorts. You see the bubbles that you exhale, move along, uh, the, the surface of the ice, well, the underside of the ice and move tracks and, um, there's some really good videos of it. I'll, I'll try to throw a video up there uh, from one of the last times we went, we went ice diving. Uh, it is unbelievable. But that's the extreme side of cold. And it is, like Warren said, it is two different things. So it's 100 foot of visibility, but the Caribbean 100, it's this weird 100 haziness. You can see 100, but there's a haze. Ice is a 100 foot, 80 foot, just pure gin clear, you know. So, I call so if I were to bring my camera on that one, would I have to do any special stuff to that? So special stuff to the camera. You shouldn't need anything special stuff with the camera, but that nice segue. Uh, William Buckley, what additional gear would person want to try ice diving need? Uh, so dry suit that's functional, absolutely. Like Dana said, um, the environmentally sealed regs, absolutely 100%. Uh, they will free flow on you like crazy and you want redundant gas supply. Now we've run into issues with redundant gas supply because people will come up with brand new redundant gas supply stuff. You don't want brand new gear to come in for ice diving. You want to plan that ahead of time um, and at least test it out and get your gear set up. Um, you don't necessarily want a brand new dry suit. You don't know how it vents because you don't want to get pinned to the ice, um, which doesn't really happen very often, but it, it can and we can help you with that. Um, Michael Brown, you, you went through some dry suit things previously uh so all of those are our options um we bring the chainsaw you need a bcd that actually has attachment points with, with uh some sort of compensating device that we can actually attach uh uh carabiners to um locking carabiners so you guys don't go crazy with me um so that you guys like wanted metal old rings right what'd you say he wanted metal rings on the attachment points. Metal also. rings on the attachment points. Um, yeah. Dave Stevens throws it up there, the, the atomic the scuba heat. Uh, so I, I this, actually demoed that. Yes, you demoed that. And this actually brings up something, and, and I, I appreciate him saying this, is there's a couple different things. Um, if you're on – Michael Brown, this goes for you. If you're on side mount and on ice, you pick to stay on one tank when you're on side mount. The diving a longer hose in – under cold water actually creates a warmer breath because okay. it, because it actually, so you stay on the long hose for that and it actually will have less chance of it free flowing um, because it warms up. And the same thing that the similar thing to the atomic scuba heat does. If you have a regular setup, you can run like Dana said, he, you, how'd you like it when you did it, Dana? I, I took two bottles down like a stage and I went down and I tested them yep. and perception wise, I, I'm pretty sure I could definitely tell there was a, a difference in the breath enough mm -hmm. where, you know, I, I would stand one, go to the other. And I was like, it definitely feels different. It definitely feels better. Uh, it feels warmer. It, yeah. you know, and it was pretty cold when I did it too. The water was probably in the low forties. Yeah. So the, the entire concept is that the tank is the water temperature and cause it's equalized out. When you take a breath, that gas comes out and decompresses and cools down. And if it's on the shorter hose, then it doesn't have time to warm. The water hasn't warmed it back up to water temperature yet. Um, so that the atomic scuba heat is this metal cylinder that you basically run well, metal, metal tubing. Um, it's similar to how we cool down beer when you brew beer um, that you just kind of thread your regulator into and it runs through and warm the water warms it up. It's weird saying the water warms it up because the water is 37 degrees, but it brings it to, to temperature. Um, so as Brock said, that's why the atomics, the apex MT 
XR has extra fins for absorbing heat from the water. There's a lot of features on regulators that people don't realize that are like little cuts in the metal. And there's all sorts of different design features to a lot of regulators and stuff that, um, that actually try to warm up the water. So, uh, those, those are the regulators I use is the MTX regulators. Yeah. yeah. So there's actually, it looks cosmetic, right. But it's actually has a, has a function to it, which is pretty interesting. Um, Da, 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 da. Warren, Warren, can can they arrange the gear they don't have from you and they come for the course? Yeah, we have a whole bunch of different stuff uh, that we utilize and help out with. Uh, and we can, as long as we have pre-planning, we can tweak IP pressure just a little bit and make sure they're not free flowing too much uh, and double checking all the different regulators. Uh, hopefully the new South Jersey scuba guys will come up and actually experience some of the ice diving and the cold water dive stuff. Uh, yes. When do you so, typically do I will, that? I will sacrifice Kevin. Every every weekend of February, essentially, we do it, depending on what we get for ice, is right. how we do it. Yeah, I it's, it's a lot. Get a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's already kind of booking up, so we can discuss and figure out. I try to keep it down to two. <laughs> I try to keep it down to two holes, Ed. My favorite. You can always fit the third one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so, geez. Yeah, you, know, you guys are off track. Dana's got that mustache going on. Who knows what's happening here? Um, <laughs> you, you need an extra job. Come on now. Yeah, an extra job. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, He's dressed for work after this. So, Michael Brown is completely different for photography. the The camera is going to function the same way, uh, but you got to be careful. Everything is. We try not to utilize. Um, oh, Dave's got a point. Uh, we try not to utilize too much stuff above water because of the fact that as we start adding in all of those different um, environments, so the water temp's 37 and we're on the surface and uh, you're going to have to do the conversions. But my favorite dive last year was negative eight degrees Celsius air and water's four degrees Celsius. <laughs> yes, Dana? What's uh, C mean? Huh? What's C is Celsius. C is oh. Celsius. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> it's a more appropriate temperature gauge. Oh, um, so eight degrees, negative eight is really, really cold. And four degrees Celsius is actually fairly warm for, for winter ask, uh, for December time frame. That's, that's not a terrible water temp. Is that, um, is that in the river? You think? Yeah, that'd be, if it's from Brock, I'm assuming it's from the river, but he could clarify that. Um, but that would make sense about four degrees in the, in the, in December would make sense there. Um, 39. Yes, thank you, Michael Brown. Yes, <laughs> there you go. It would make sense right around December um, to Put have your shoes back on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the above the air temperature can actually freeze a bunch of the stuff. We actually saw somebody that got a frozen inflator and they uh, poured hot water in the the inflator to to warm it up, and uh, it actually got stuck in the hose. Um, they actually had it freeze because they, you know, one of the best ways to keep it keep it thawed is actually to be in the water with it. Um, when I teach, I stay in the water almost the entire day, so I don't freeze up. So oh, clips don't freeze. None of those things. <laughs> what, Ed? What? It sounds horrible. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> what do you mean it sounds horrible? Listen, I can do my cold water thing, but you're talking about ice. Oh, my yeah. God. Just battery okay. packs and heated take underwear. Him, take battery Kevin. packs and heated stuff. You guys, I have the shop. Whatever weekend you guys want to go, Kevin will drive. <laughs> and, uh, it's, not, it's all relative. I mean, we do this for fun. So yeah. if you don't want to do it, nobody's ever like, you got to go ice diving. Dragging yeah. you into the ice. <laughs> yeah, we can Photoshop that. Photo it's fine. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, behind, Brock brings up a very good case. point. Uh, your battery life, you check your batteries, make sure they're fully charged because it will destroy batteries. I've had plenty that. I've had ones that I've taken full charge, put them in the water, and I was like, yeah, no, we're done. <laughs> like, like that, that's enough of that. Um, so, uh where is it, Dave? Uh, full face mask. Uh, Dave, really good point on the full face mask. Full face mask is going to keep you warmer. Uh, we have seen issues with full face because people come up when they aren't proficient with the full face and they're like, I bought this for ice. And they're like, I'm going to try it out. Not the time to try it. Um, get pre-trained. It's actually worse. It's worse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if, you have to if you have to take your uh, full face mask off, then imagine that shock. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, Eric. So, Eric, anyone running heat? So, 
I, this is a post for that he made earlier trying to, and he was uh, asking about a bunch of different heat stuff. We've seen some people run heat. Um, I don't personally run heat and uh, Dana has actually seen me. I sit in the water pretty much all day. Uh, I really don't get out. I mean, I'm on the surface hanging out, whatnot, but um, I run uh, just thick undergarments and uh, she's going to wave back. <laughs> uh, a couple of people have run them, but we've run into some issues with uh, with frayed wires in the past, stuff like that. Every, the technology is getting significantly better, but I haven't bought into anything specifically quite yet just because of um, some of the some of the water or some of the fraying issues that was in the past. Um, I just haven't jumped quite yet. There's a couple of things I was looking at. Um, Scott likes the Santis. I've seen a lot of complimentary stuff on Santee heated stuff. Um, Thermolution, I've seen some with uh, just a little bit different. Um, yeah, I mean, you could run heat by peeing in your wetsuit. I mean, but uh, it's a little crazy. freaking cold for wetsuits there. Uh, wet gloves, but it's kind of hard to pee into the wet gloves, I guess, if you got a dry thing. suit on. <laughs> yeah, that's a in your um, yeah. Uh, Eric Fine says, I'm using Light Monkey shirt and Santy gloves. First winter running both. I've heard good things about both. Uh, I've, uh, the newer versions, I've heard good things. The old, some of the older versions I've heard of, of some issues with the wires and stuff like that, but I've watched some people, people run that. Um, uh, Dana, you don't run heat on any, do you run heat currently? No, I was, when you're talking about peeing in the gloves, I thought I had an idea, but, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. um, I did actually order a heated vest and, did you? uh, it's called the fix under. Oh, I saw that at the shop. Yeah. Yeah. Have you tried it yet? Uh, no, it's coming in the uh, wave. Wave. Say hi. 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 Um, <laughs> Say hi. Chris they, had a demo one from our, a Kevin the guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got one of those kids here too. It's Not good. nearly um, as uh, distraction. <laughs> yeah. Much cuter. Yeah, much cuter than Kevin, yes. Yeah. And taller. Probably, yeah. Dangerous. Yeah. And I he's four and he's like five foot. <laughs> um, the uh, fixed undergarment I got from a guy, and that was a demo one. And mm -hmm. we're going to get some more of them, and I'm going to demo it in the colder water. Um, oh, honey, you got to go. <laughs> and uh, so I'm looking trying to take it's like two 70 amp hour packs inside right. the vest, and it's a Bluetooth watch. Kind of neat. It's a little bit less intrusive than yeah. a full on canister pack. and you know, I'd be very interested in trying that. I'm, as Eric was, was chatting about this earlier, I've been looking for heat somewhat. I have not been cold yet. I've been perfectly fine. I had no reason to get heat this weekend. Um, I didn't even have my normal undergarments on for colder stuff. Um, so I normally go completely dry with, uh, I wear an X core vest and fourth element uh, Arctics. So, <clears throat> so I would um, run heat, except. <laughs> I did. I did run heat one time, and then, and then I stopped. Oh, hold on. Let me put you on solo. Let me see what the deal is. <laughs> what? what is is that is, you? That is me, with uh, with heat. That when was did a you? Heat, that was a heated shirt with nothing under it. I branded myself. <laughs> when did you go through your emo phase? I didn't realize you had that going on. Back that up oh. a little bit. The, the hair and everything. Wow, that's pretty emo. Uh, Good job. Look at that. That was, yeah, that was like five, six years ago. Oh, okay. I didn't realize you had that face, but okay. So, burnt, burnt the shit out of my back. <laughs> wow. That is impressive. How'd you do that? I had nothing under it. Uh, poor, poor teaching. And, and poor teaching. Yeah. We're not going to go down that road. All right. So, um, we're just going to stay the road we got here. Uh, <laughs> In case they, they tell you you got to wear like a skin under those, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Is that what they tell you? Yeah. yeah he, he he uses actual part. skin. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, I'm I agree with Dave. Out. Wow, that's that is that <laughs> wow. is wow. Yeah. I know that's yeah. that is something. There, yeah. there are multiple things with that that picture that is that are interesting and just. It's okay. Impressive. I'm a die professional. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure you are. Did you uh, certify you as one? Yeah. No, I did actually just certify you as a course director, didn't I? Paper. Congratulations, Mr. Ed. Paperwork. <laughs> paperwork. Yeah, we got to do that this week. Um, you got your paperwork. Got to upload all that. But that's we digress. So, uh, 
environmentally sealed stuff, um, heat, uh, full face mask. Make sure you get trained on those prior to it. You can put a bite rag in some of them. The OTS Spectrum works well with that. Uh, I'm not super well versed on full face masks. I just use regular bite rags. Um, Dana, you use many full face? You use what do you use? Ocean Reef OTS, or do you just wear your? I've got a, I've got an OTS that I use. Yeah. You know the standard, and um, from there, if I, I don't even use it that much. No. So. Yeah. No, I, it's it's a uh, requires reconfiguring and everything that I have no, have set up, and I'm I'm pretty much I like the idea of being the same. You know, my gear always yeah. the same. Yeah, I'm a so, huge fan of that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Especially since I'm teaching, I, I want everything dead on. I mean, I've had I've had great luck with my my Hollis regs that I utilize under the ice and came off with a block of ice when I came out of the water and they were working perfectly fine. I think uh, we were all wowed, wowed by that when we stopped into the shop after that ice dive that one time. Everybody's regulator just had a crystal clear coating mm -hmm. of ice around the whole thing. Yeah. We were like, everybody's taking pictures, you know. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, nice slow buildup of ice. Um Brock, wonderful question. This question we actually get a lot. I'd love to address this. Do you really notice a difference with argon? Um, so oh, we're starting to get some loaded questions here. Uh, notice a difference with argon. So uh, I have not dove personally with argon. Um, here's the situation with argon and happy to have you guys chime in because I think, Dana, have you done argon previously? I've never actually used argon. I looked at it like you'd have to purge your suit with a pretty good... Yeah. Got the argon before you got in the water to make it a bigger balance than, right. than not, you know. Michael Brown or that. Ed? No, I haven't done it. Okay, so yeah. just from the, what you've told me about it. Yeah, so uh, what Dane is referring to, there was a study done on argon and suits, and you actually have to purge your suit uh, two or three times to depending on the size of the suit and how much you actually purge it, and um, you'd have to purge it multiple times to get pure argon in there. And then when they did the study and actually got pure argon into the suit, uh, the divers noticed essentially no difference uh, and their core temperature didn't change in any way, shape or form. Uh, there was no discernible difference. Now you have a non-breathable gas uh, with a reg and a, you know, a potential mistake, not that it's, it's pretty hard to do, but it's a potential mistake and of a non-breathable gas that's little to no difference compared to air. Now, if you have some high trimix mixes, that, that could cause some issues, but um, we're not utilizing that under the ice. But yeah, under cold, cold conditions, you're really not going to see anything. An air inflation system would be better off usage than argon and it's cheaper. So that's from the studies that was done. And we could post those studies if we wanted to. Uh, Scott actually has a question about rebreathers. When it comes to rebreather operations in cold water, there is a ton of information on it. Jill Heinrich did a bunch of stuff um, with that. And cold water rebreather diving is a completely separate uh, animal. Um, you need to heat the scrubber. You need to keep it in a condition. You need to make sure that the mushroom valves have no way of freezing. You have to be able to pre-breathe the unit inside of a confined area. Uh, it's... It, there's a lot that goes into that operation that is beyond the scope of most people. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. All that rebreather diving. <laughs> yeah. <Ew>. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you start. Um, <laughs> Aragon. Aragon. Yeah. Aragon. I'll charge Aragon. you for the air. You ever heard of uh, the air that goes in. You ever heard of Argox? What? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Argox. It's yeah. Getting... They make uh argon with oxygen and to make a breathable gas mixture uh -huh. and then their cut narcotic effect was so significant uh at, at like 60 feet that it was you know they abandoned it totally people gotta stop uh, doing things <laughs> this is terrible just trying to kill people left that's right. it let's mix this argon and uh what do you have there 85 percent o2 what, and what do you have this question and a dash have? of helium and can you Here breathe that uh this is a Super session IPA. Oh, super session. All right. So you're not oh, as dark as I thought you were going to be. I thought you had the sip of sunshine. Uh, I think I drank that one first. <laughs> oh, good. Wonderful. Maybe. Yeah, he did. The yellow. That's amazing. Hey, Kevin's back. He Hello. wants to talk about the prism in cold water. Kevin. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, that was, why would you even give him a floor? Uh, <laughs> you have to just ignore. Uh, He's the worst. So the. Warm water is great. Warm, warm water. I don't think it really, well, there's some things that test your skill with, with set with, with warm water. Uh, 
you can get a whole lot of vertigo going in warm water because of the fact that, you know, well, especially you can have warm water, you can have great visibility, but you can also have particulate matter just doing a hang in New Jersey. Do you have you ever get any vertigo, Ed, doing a or Michael Brown doing a hang in New Jersey in any way, shape, or form? No. No, no but we do have the occasional uh talks about sharks and sitting on a hang line for five minutes in nothingness. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when it's pea soup and I tell MB that uh, hey, you know, if Jaws comes, <laughs> what are you gonna, gonna, gonna see it? Yeah, what are you gonna do if you saw a shark? Uh -huh. And then I'm sitting on a hang line for five minutes, like this yeah, is where ruined, it happened. Ruined his day. Different animals, definitely different yeah. animals. And, and there's a very big difference between the Caribbean and, and those warm water sites. And, and you can get vertigo. You can get turned around pretty easily. Um, you can swim off to something that's further away that you don't realize uh, and really get yourself kind of turned around and, and further away from where you're where you think you can. Uh, so your navigation skills got to be a little bit different. Um, we run into it here, but you guys. You guys have switching currents down by you, right? Like it's it's going to be warm water. It might not be necessarily be Caribbean, but even down towards Florida, we could get flip flopping currents, or washing machines, or washing machines. Yep, uh, we don't have that as much. We have the flow of the river, and that's um, oh, Brock brings up a good point. Um, so on the topic of vertigo, if you flush your hood and you get this, and that's where kind of we're going to talk about with full face mask, but I got off track was. Um, you flush and that cold water hits you and your body freaks out. And we see that with ice. The first time somebody goes in the water and their face hits the cold, cold water, sometimes it takes a minute for them to get to get stabilized. Same thing with the hood. If you flush that thing, then it kind of tweaks you out a little bit. Uh, full face mask. What Dana was getting at is when you take that full face mask off, if you were to, if it was the free flow and you got to get rid of that, you pull it off, you got to get a bite rag and a mask on yourself to be able to make that ascent. And that flush of cold water against your face can give you vertigo at the same time. So all of that becomes concerns if you have a full face mask or anything like that and be able to be proficient at that. So, oh, yep. Michael Brown, next time. Sit on Deco, hang with the guy next to you. Has four dead fish in his bag. I or monk sure fish. bring the sharks. Yeah, yeah. or monk yeah. fish catch by hand. One of those. That is the game we play. <laughs> it is. So uh, we kind of covered a bunch of stuff with when it comes to cold water diving. You do need a lot of gear, uh, and you need to. Uh, hold on, I got completely sidetracked by this. Uh, I I don't know. I'm not sure who told you that. Who told you that? Why would uh, you, that, was, that was before with Kevin. That was the Kevin <laughs> thing. Oh, God. God damn it, Jen. <laughs> oh, so you're putting your phone in the holes. <laughs> Jeez. All right. No, you do not put bad weight all over your face. But if I'm not even. No, I'm not you're making him leave. Yeah, no, I'm not going to. Not gonna, God, you have broken Michael it. Brown. God damn it. Thank um, you. I'm going to let that be. So uh, it is completely different gear. There's more gear involved and more gear selection when it comes to cold water. But I think the rewards are there because you see stuff. The Islander wreck. We do the Islander wreck at different times in the year. And the Islander wreck looks different every single time you do it with depending on the water temperatures. Um, sometimes you see more. Sometimes you see less. It's a completely different landscape. Um, Dana, any other wrecks that cold water that you see that look a little bit different? I think the one of the the easiest ones to get to is the key storm. If you can get out there in uh, December, mm -hmm. and you can actually have visibility where you can see end oh to end of things, yeah. you know, I mean not right. totally end to end, but you can see really large spans of it that you've never been able to put the pieces together before. When you can only see you know fifty feet at a time, if forty feet at a time, you know, a little bit one yeah. way, a little bit the other way, you know, when you can when you can get that perspective of length, it's uh that's really neat. Yeah for sure and i'm looking forward to getting that same type of viz uh like on the jodry and because currently i've only been limited to seeing you know a few feet not a few feet yeah. you know limited one way and limited the other way i'm looking for that uh the photos that we had seen from the other guys that came up and, and published so yeah ryan king and Jeff yeah yeah i'd like to see that myself you know so i'm looking forward to that yeah how is and the, the cold, cold water yeah. so when you're ice diving in the the st lawrence how is, is the current still the same or is it slowed down a little Totally depends on how the uh, IJC is handling water flow. Uh, this year, I think they're going to continue dumping water mm -hmm. until they had to slow down when ice forms. Then they slow down for a little bit when ice forms so that they let a nice, um, healthy ice covering form. 
then they start dumping water again. So that's, uh, there's a te- there's a technique to that water management so that they don't create an ice jam and lose control of the water. Yeah. So all of the all of the Great Lakes and the channels and and the St. Lawrence River are controlled by an overall board on exactly how how it's being let through, um, let through all the lakes and and to control flooding and control like Dana said ice and there's a whole thing and there's lots of drama involved in in people's opinions. Um, so, um, yes. Okay. Um, so we'll come back to that in a minute, but yeah. So that controls a lot. Normally when we're on the Islander, there's a, if it's ice, there's, it's an eddy there and it kind of slows down and it does, it's not as, as, as pronounced as it is sometimes. Um, but you can get yourself turned around actually Kevin and them. That's what screwed up their navigation from what they claim is that they were trying to follow the currents and it eddies right there. And there's no way to follow the currents there because it eddies and it's going to feel like it's from different directions. Once again, a compass, if you're, towards Canada and you want to come back to the United States, you tend to go south unless, as James Mott said, it's Detroit. So. Um, she yeah. is the worst. <laughs> it, is, it is what it is. Was he trying to operate uh, them? Uh, yes. God. So, yes, the PRISM 2, because Scott asked about the PRISM 2 specifically, uh, CE tested improved water depths to 328 and um, 4 degrees Celsius. So, right, that's, they actually, this one's actually been tested down below um that 50 degrees we were talking about previously we clarified that uh but they're like david was saying here doesn't mean you should there's special operation stuff and there was uh an article recently not really recently um but there was an article about diving rebreathers in cold water so um what, what does that lower lower bound mean though you know 39 that's uh what does that mean when you go past that is it just not approved it's, for it or no well can't? So it's CE testing. So there's very specific parts of CE testing on exactly what um, it's pretty darn complicated over what that's the, the test range that they did it for to get the approval for like their standards for breakthrough. So it's like 1.6 liters per minute of CO2 production, which is crazy high uh, and, and scrubber duration and all those sorts of things. There's a lot that goes um goes goes into that oh uh good question from william buckley uh are you attached to the surface well i surface line well i when ice diving so the way i teach ice diving is there are two locking carabiners um the tender puts those carabiners onto the diver confirms their lock the diver confirms their lock uh it then goes to the surface um, that line goes to the surface through the tender's hand and the very end of that line is double attached um, to two separate uh, ice screws, one longer than the other in the ice um, locking carabiner. So you can't lose the person. And during the course we do uh, lost diver drills also. So that if you, uh, if you get lost, you actually put your hands up and you put your hands against the ice and you make yourself as big as possible. And the, 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 it's called the 90% diver, but the relief diver goes in looking for that diver if they were to lose the line in some way, shape, or form. If you, you were using the cheap and cheap line that could break, um, they would do a sweep and wrap the person with the line. We do that practice. Make you're, sure. you're totally talking head into it. This sounds yes. hard. It's hard, man. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. You I, you can't be selling anybody on ice diving that's watching right. <laughs> it's great. People, are, I was trying to think of it. Yeah, people well, are like super excited. Yeah, They're asking yeah, questions. Put, uh, yeah. Eleven screws into the ice, and uh, yeah. one guy has a longer rope, another yeah. guy has a shorter rope, and we tie it to. You. And if you're dying, you put your hands up. <laughs> you're not dying. You just are off the line. And you know, in reality, like yeah, we do all these drills, but in reality, with ice diving, especially where we are, you stop and go, like there, there it is. Yeah, that, that's how I get, get out. Oh, and, I'm sure. And the, and the relief yeah. divers, we actually have to pretend the skills because they go down. They go, yeah, they're right there. Like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Going yeah. Away. yeah, they're right there. Do I really have to do this? Yes, you have to do the sweep. We have to learn how to do this. Yes. Um, back yeah, and forth. Um, right. um, you got to do the, oh, the box. Clarify. Part. Vertical against the ice. You put your hands up and you stay as tall as you possibly can, not horizontal. You you, you make yourself as, as big as possible. I, I yeah. Will. Yeah. Tall. Um. Uh, flipping back and forth to the rebreather thing, which I was talking about previously. Yeah. It's the Warren, air temperatures. That's why I was Warren talking about. They're signing up. Yeah. Um, that's what we we're talking about. The, the shanty and being constricted and actually be warm enough. Um, 
I love ice diving. I'm not sure what the big deal is. The water warmer than the air above the ice. Um, yeah, the, the water is warmer. Yeah. Hey, nicer. surprise. It's cold. Dress for yeah. it, right? Yeah. Oh, the surface. I mean, recommend yeah. P valves, though. I what? Said, do you not recommend P valves? Oh, do you sure. recommend a cold water P valve? I use the P valve in the cold water. Is it environmentally sealed P valve? You just downside the downsize the condom catheter. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's gonna have to return those extra smalls he got though. There's a box of them here somewhere. Three yeah. XLs, yeah. <laughs> Hey, he's There's got to be a pediatrics supply a supply. Double X, oh, double that's X why you took five of them, Jason. Oh, <laughs> that's where that box went. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you New Jersey people need to replace your ankle knife with a hatchet. Nope. We just go with two knives. Oh. A tank knife and a machete. A tank knife and a machete. Nice. Um, all right, so so we went extreme. I was just going to talk cold in general, but it seems like we got a lot of questions about ice. People are people are very very intrigued by ice, uh, whether they're chickens and don't want to do it, and they just like they it's just like Ed, just kind of eh, oh, eh. I'm, not, I'm not a real diver. It's okay. Eh, um, yeah. Just sometimes, uh, just weekends. Yes. Uh only on Halloween, Rick. Is that the sheepy? The sheepy only on Halloween. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> I got jokes. Um, so, uh, ice diving is great. Uh, cold water diving is great. I I really like it. I I do enjoy Caribbean diving. But one of the big things is it's yes, there's gear selection. It doesn't really cost you anything extra versus um, when you really compare the overall sport. Yeah, it might be a little bit more, but. Um, by the time you pay for travel and you isolate yourself only into those warm Caribbean waters, uh, especially from where we live, it the cost adds up significantly and you're doing less diving. We see people that travel only and do 10, 15 dives a year if they're lucky versus people who can dive here. Ed, how many times did you go out this year on on multiple dive boats in Northeast? Oh, God. Oh, my God. I know counting's hard, but... <laughs> 10, 10, 12 boats. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I think we had 20 ish boats go. Yeah. So that's yeah. what, 40 dives ish? Mm -hmm. That's 40 dives. That's just weekends. That's not like, so going out. Dana, you run a charter, what, every weekend? Yeah. I have a, this year I was, I was pretty busy, but I had charter every weekend, four charters a weekend, most Four charters a weekend. So that is um, two days. Eight. Two times four is eight. Yeah, sir. Are you doing four dives 16. a day? You guys are doing four dives a day, so 16 dives a weekend. So yeah. I didn't know if it was two and one or what you were doing. Uh, I mean, assume 16, but average out probably 12 per weekend because of tech diving and doing single dives and stuff like that sometimes. Blown yeah. Up. yeah. So th there is plenty of local diving, even if it's cool. I mean, the river and New Jersey warmed up plenty this year, right? Oh, so, we are we are prospecting. Yeah. There, there are spots. <laughs> uh, I think also too, on the side note, like for warm water diving, um, if you hit Cozumel over and over and over, or like in a general, like an over Island over and over again, over again, in my aspect of like seeing the same reef over and over again, like how many times can you see a coral head opposed to like, if you're diving off the cold water, you're diving a wreck mm -hmm. and the life that's there and the different things that you can see. Uh, yeah. Yes, it's a little more daunting to like the newer divers, but once you get into the water, it's a different aspect. It's, you know, you're seeing a whole new world opposed to Caribbean, yeah. you know, and the Caribbean can be classified as like the same stuff almost over and over again, unless you're hitting like, you know, Indonesia and the different areas like that. Yeah. I mean, pe people used to tell us like, oh, I prefer, you know, Jersey wreck diving and cold water stuff to Caribbean. Caribbean, generally, you know what you're going to do. You're going to be doing reef diving, maybe some wreck. It's awesome. It's pretty. It's colorful. Uh, you got the fish, you got whatever else you might find. Um, and if you have a great dive master, find any of those things, that's fun. But if you don't have a good DM that's going to find you those interesting things to look at, then you're floating over reef and you're like, hmm. And someone once said that like they find Jersey wreck diving more interesting than reef diving. And I was like, you're crazy. <laughs> I, would, I would rather be warm and hundred foot of hundred foot of viz and see all these pretty fish and everything like that. And then 
oh, I started diving Jersey a bit more and I did some reef diving and I was like not finding as much as I hoped and like, God damn it. Don't tell me I want to go back <laughs> to dive Jersey. Well, but the reason I, I Jersey dive now is because of him. You know, yeah. I, 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 from tradition from the beginning, I was an 88, 80. I, 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 all I did was Caribbean. You couldn't get me into cold water. Yeah. And I think it was what, 18. I was doing DMing with a you. Couple years. And yeah, I was in the quarry okay. with him almost every weekend as soon as I got a dry suit. And I said, the only way yeah. you're getting me into cold water is with a dry suit. So we did that. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's, it's like, like you guys too. If, if you're, if you live in a place that's going to have cold water diving and you want to be an active diver, something has to give and that's okay. Like if you want to wait until it warms up a bit in the summer and dive it in a five mil or a seven mil, that's cool. But if you want to spring for the dry suit, but, even, even better. Yeah, but like, there's different you ways. It. Yeah. There's different ways. Like if you are open to doing the cold water and you're just afraid of the cold, I mean, I get cold in 80 degree water. He's a bitch. Sure. Uh, it's because I have low body fat. Um, it's a family show, Ed. You just yeah. call me fat. It's a family but, show. I mean, there's, there's different levels um, to jump into it. Like, you know, if you get cold easily, there's different kinds of undergarments you can do. You can, there's different steps you can take to get to that level that, you know, comfortable diving into that water. And once you get into that water, you're realizing like, there's a lot more here. You know, it's not, not that daunting. You don't have to go to hunt. You don't have to go to recover. You can go and look at a wreck at 80 to 100 foot and see it pristine you know you can see something you wouldn't see in the caribbean yeah yeah you can see you know little kind of tiny boats in the caribbean but we still get caribbean fish up here yeah yeah you do yep yep we get a uh, herd lionfish too haven't seen any yet thank I haven't God. Seen any. But... yeah yeah it's just a different style of stuff and and i think what we've seen this year especially and dana said you were you were specifically extra busy this year right dana yeah i think that was with the uh rebound or the you know the uh bumper effect from the canadian border mm-hmm. yeah so nobody could get across. yeah so we can't go to, to canada and do some of the wrecks so so we've stayed mm-hmm. and done some more of the u.s type wrecks and it's also i think a big thing of and and we've done more new jersey trips and come down and hung out with you guys a little bit more and done you know went off the indy two and and um and done some more dives down there of you know, people can't get out to the Caribbean and we're starting to be able to see people traveling a little bit right now, but it, it's a little bit of a challenge and start, people are starting to realize that, yeah, they might be a little bit nervous about the cold water, but it's not terribly cold and it's not as bad as what they think. And they're starting to see stuff and realize that local diving really needs to be pushed and it doesn't matter what they've been told for years. And, you know, people trying to just go on trips, go on trips, go on trips, that local diving that we have here is amazing. You know, yeah, I mean, the number of wrecks that are diveable for recreation from the St. Lawrence down through New Jersey and North Carolina is probably in the thousands. Oh my God. Easily. Yeah. Recre- like, just well, recreational, like thousands of different wrecks. I mean, Jersey alone has a couple thousand mm-hmm. and they're not know, all these guys too. are out there bumping into new, mm-hmm. new marks every couple of weeks. I mean, they all yeah. have their secret, their secret spots. They had, mm-hmm. don't tell anybody about them. Like, Okay. But yep. I mean, it's also the stigma too. Like Jersey's like, oh, you have to go deep. I mean, Ed and I, I think what's the old last year on Cape May. Cape May, you have you have 60, artificial reef yeah. in 65 to 85 feet. Um, and then you can kind of upgrade from there. I mean, now doing dives with the, you know, like you guys using the indie and us using the gypsy. Yep. You still have dives between 85, you know, that's kind of our like starter level for that boat. And then yep. you have them into 130, 140. You know, no one's saying you gotta go and and hit. 150 or 200 feet for for some good wreck and yeah like we saw this year we had days where we had 50 60 foot of viz across the wreck and 100 foot of viz like like literally 80 to 100 foot of viz looking up to the boat like holy crap there's boat yeah like yeah now we're not saying that's every weekend no right <laughs> you might come up the right. next weekend and be like what happened? And sometimes yeah. you see weird creatures down there that I want to poke and Ed yells at me for. Yeah. Right. When and Ed, he, sees a, he sees a six foot angel shark and I don't know what it is. <laughs> so you probably right. shouldn't poke that. Yeah. Not yeah. nothing. You shouldn't poke anything. If you're cold, you're doing something wrong. Dress for the water, weather water tub. That is a very, very good point. It might be cold water, but if you have a dry suit, and I wear my dry suit all year long, but if you have a dry suit and you've got the appropriate undergarments, you're really not cold. Nope. Especially no. if you steal my undergarments, right, Michael Brown? Uh, we traded, yeah, for like a year. <laughs> yeah, we did trade for like. Oh, it's a jelly bean. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
Is there anything? It's a very good point. If you train dry suit as part of your open water course, you get divers who are already used to the equipment for managing cold water diving. That's one of my guys plugging that we uh, we teach dry suit from day one because because of that. We want people to be comfortable in dry suits, learn from it, and be able to use it and be comfortable for the exact reasons. If you're cold, you're doing something wrong. So we don't want to be doing something wrong. We want to make sure that they're they're in the dry suits going from day one. So yeah, and and it's not. It's really not that hard of a of a piece of equipment to use, yeah. as long yeah, as the diver gets, it. if the yeah. it, it's definitely something that we would like to work into if possible. Mm -hmm. um, as long as the diver understands buoyancy and the characteristics of uh, characteristics of buoyancy, it should be very simple process. Mm -hmm. I and mean, by the time they hit that Caribbean, they're going to be pros. Yep. Yeah, in the dry suit, like yeah. you, yeah. Uh -huh. with dry gloves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. We, in the Caribbean, yeah, yeah you can do it. It's, it's fine, you know. <laughs> I've gone in uh, Bonaire. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I've gotten I've gotten chilly in Bonaire doing repetitive dives over and over again. I did a close to four hour dive on my P two in in the Caribbean with Dave Stallings. Like we, yeah, we got chilly towards the end of that. That's a long time underwater. Um, not all of us have heated suits like Dana with hot water. Yeah, that's Doesn't right. Hey, if you like try, airport, if you try, you'll never go back. Yeah, I know. well, we kind of half tried I'm it. Off without me. Yeah, yeah, it's it's nice. It's like what 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 Dana's not telling you is that he's just actually peeing into your suit, and he's not telling you that it's not hot water. It's just him peeing. So you yeah. didn't train him how to put anything on. Yeah, warming it up, warming up the water for my kidneys. I think yeah. uh, Mark has uh, a good point there. Mark yeah. has a very good point there. Uh, even if you're, if you have a flood, you are plenty warm. I, I actually had a situation where I was flooding for a significant period of time. I had like a pinhole somewhere and uh, I had no clue until I went to lighter undergarments. Like I've been wet for months, haven't I? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. So uh, very, very good point. Good quality undergarments um, is massive for staying warm. Even if you flood, um, I used a lot of, I was on the bear, uh, one of the bear select dry suit selection stuff talking about it on their Facebook live. And, and I try to use, uh, I basically use a version of, of reef gloves that the bear X wears, but the, the, uh, uh, they're reef gloves almost. And they, so I use like a neoprene almost base. So that if I do flood, it does my gloves. If I rip my glove or something, which I've done previously, like with a snap clip or hitting a zebra muscle or something, I, my, my hands are still warm or like, uh, alpaca wool, uh, Alpaca's not really wool, but alpaca or or a wool type of liner, you'll stay warm even when you're wet. So, yes. Or neoprene yeah. dry suit. There's all sorts of selection. I mean, really, you, when you're picking out a dry suit, you really need to go and, and kind of get picked out, yeah. fitted, and everything like that. Um, dry suit's a big selection. I think the undergarment thing, most people will realize and appreciate the good undergarment once they try to dive it without a good one. Yeah. Um, and you could try layering up for a while, uh, sweats. I mean, he did a hoodie, uh, <laughs> Under Armour sweats. Yeah, you'll stay warm, yeah. but the whole like the... moisture wicking thing until you really do get that that really good um, undergarment, it, it makes a, a lot huge of difference. Yeah. And then, what did you say, Dana? No, like you're saying, like I see a lot of the military type underwear being layered. Oh yeah, yeah. I just can't see how some of the people are warm when they just have. It doesn't look nearly adequate. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The scuba stuff specially made for scuba, which is, you know, and the base layer wicking, like maybe. Warm. Yeah, it's very, very warm. Very warm. And getting, warm. getting the timing right for hot outside and cold in water, it's a it's a little bit of an art. Yeah. You know, so you don't reasonable dry suit. Yes. <laughs> so you don't suffocate before you get in the water. It's a, mm -hmm. It is key. And zipper ones, do you get a full length one that you can zipper and take down until you're just ready to get in? All that fun stuff. So oh, yeah. just walking in, if it's hot out, walking in with the wet with the dry suit on and getting water on it so that as the water evaporates, it cools you down. It's called evaporative cooling. That's a big one too. Oh, yeah. Yep. You so. know about that evaporative oh, cooling. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he did a paper on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he did. Yeah. Um, not getting frozen into your suits. That's a big one with ice diving. When you get out, make sure you unzip because you'll get frozen, <laughs> frozen into your suit. I have not had that happen, but it, I've seen people that are getting frozen into stuff or frozen to the ice or, yeah, there's all sorts of fun stuff. I feel like I'd be happy staying in the dry suit frozen. Yeah, yeah you can. It, it will thaw for you, but yeah. He's got the P valve. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, as long as with P valve, you're good. All right. Um, remember, I said this was going to be a half an hour. We're at an hour 10 now. So um, <laughs> it's because we're such entertaining people. Yes. Uh, yes. So, uh, 
I'm going to say goodbye to you guys. Thank you very much. And then say goodbye to everybody else. So I really appreciate everything. Um, MB we stayed on track. We did stay on track very well um, for the most part. MB and <laughs> Ed, thank you very much from South Jersey Scuba. Dana, thank you from Hunts Diving. Have a wonderful night, guys. All right. See you later. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right, all. Thank you very, very much for watching. Um, we are going to have a uh, follow and subscribe button right there. It hangs out kind of right in this region right here. You can go ahead and click that. It's on YouTube. Uh, we appreciate everything. Uh, again, same thing with Patreon. We've got a couple of people done doing Patreon. It really helps out with uh, a bunch of different stuff we, we are doing and taking care of and, and paying for some of these services that we have uh, to provide this for you. It really helps out since uh, it's coming out of the coming out of the my dive shop's pocket, my pocket to, to pr provide these for you. So any help that you can give us would be amazing. Uh, we really love having, we really love having the conversations. Uh, in two weeks time, we are going to do a big one of what would you want to see changed in your dive shop? That includes mine. Uh, if there's something you hate about my dive shop, tell me, because I want to fix it. Um, what, how can we change dive shops? What can we do a little bit differently? How can we meet with our customers a little bit better? Um, how can we flip the script, if you will. We've tried a bunch of different things. Um, I really want to delve into that and see what we can do as uh, as dive shops to really meet the needs of our consumers and uh, really push the envelope for what dive training and dive shops could be. So once again, thank you very much. Appreciate everything. Appreciate you guys. Uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down there. Like and share on Facebook. Anything you guys can do to, to get our numbers up was super appreciated. Uh, have a wonderful Thanksgiving because uh, we won't see you until after that. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Talk to you guys. Thanks. Bye.